everyone welcome back to my channel so i wanted to give you a quick little intro into the diy that i'm doing uh, this video is going to be on a accent wall that i'm doing in my staircase so this is my staircase it's 20 feet high this is the finished wall and i just wanted to kind of give some clarifying information before we get started first thing is the boards that i use for the design are mdf they're one by twos the border that I use around the perimeter, those are going to be one by threes and it's just wood. I do start priming my uh, surfaces, boards, everything that I do, I prime it. It's either going to be just regular kilts primer underneath white paint or it's going to be kilts primer and I added black to it if I'm doing black paint. So in this instance, I'm doing black paint. So I'm going to be using kilts with a little bit of black added, and that's what gives it the gray finish. So on the wall right now, that is a flat paint, and then I also go through the slats with a sheen, um, a satin sheen. So just to clarify, the wall is flat, the boards are a satin sheen. The paint that I use is from Lowe's, it's Sherman Williams. The black is tricorn black. So I just want to clarify that before we get started. I hope you guys enjoy this video. It was a little bit challenging. I did get the design from another person, so I will link their information in the video or in the comments, that way you guys have that information. There also is going to be a link to a cut list. Now what this is, is a color-coded cut list where you can see the dimensions of each of the slats. And it makes it a little bit easier for you to try and follow the design and see how big mine is. Um, I am, again, using this in a staircase, so my measurements are might gonna be a little bit uh, larger than maybe the area that you might be covering. So it just depends on where you are doing this accent wall, and then you can always adjust it. I cut as I went because my measurements started to become an inch to an inch and a half off. So I just cut as I went. Um, it is a little bit challenging, but I promise you the design does just repeat itself and it does get easier as you go. I also wanted to let you know that you will need a miter saw to cut everything at a 45 degree angle. So make sure you have that. Uh, I needed help to do this. There was no way that I would be able to do this on my own. It took me a few days to complete. I didn't think it was gonna take that long either, but um, I am really happy with the final product and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So I hope you enjoy. So let's get started. So let's get into it. The wall has already been primed with the kilts primer with a little bit of black. Thank you Art for giving us a little dance here. And now we're going in with the tricorn black. This is in flat, painting that wall. I'm setting out my slats, so these are the one by twos, getting these ready to start priming. I'm priming again with the kilts with a little bit of black added, that's why it's that gray finish. I do this with everything that I'm painting with black. So these are wood slats, these are one by threes. This is what I'm gonna use around the perimeter of the wall. So instead of having the boards just bounce up against the edge of the wall, I like to put a perimeter around. That way it just looks a lot cleaner. So these are one by threes. Again, this is just wood. These are not MDF like the other trim that I use. These will also get primed as well with the gray. I'm going in with satin tricorn black and I'm only painting the edges. Next, I'm going to measure the length of my wall, find the center point, and then just draw a line down the center. As you can see, we are now starting to install the perimeter pieces with a brad nailer. So my battery died and I wasn't able to get all of this for you, but I just kind of wanted to explain the things that we did. First thing is we made the cross in the middle. This is actually three pieces. I want to show you what it looks like. So the first thing was putting in this cross and we drew it, the line down the center of the wall. So you can see, so that's what lines up. And then we did 
these two, and then went all the way around. So these are cut at like a 45 and a 45. That way it goes in there nicely. Let me pull out. You can see the two long lines here. And then we did another long one here, 49, 9, 16. And then these are the shorter ones here, 21 and a half. Right there. And then these are 23 and 9 16. So that's what we completed so far today. And this is the pattern that just keeps repeating itself. But I just wanted to show you how we got it started. At first, we weren't sure how to start it, so I didn't want to have you guys just see us struggle but now it's starting to come together. So this is what the pattern looks like. If you guys look at my Instagram, you'll probably see more of the how-to because my phone was recording all of it. I'm sorry, my battery died. I'm sorry y'all, my battery died so I wasn't able to show you the first couple pieces. But if you do look at that cut list that I link in the comments, it does give you the design. I started with the center of the cross and I just worked my way out. So I, I'm pretty sure once you get it started, then it will be a lot easier. And I put my first piece just in the middle of the wall and I didn't measure it, you know, any distance from the ground. I just kind of placed it because I know that the pattern is going to repeat itself. So as you get it started, it becomes a lot easier. I promise. Another tip is the distance between the parallel boards is five and five eighths. If you keep the same distance, um, it's, it's going to look good. I just want to make sure you are keeping the same distance in between your boards, making sure everything is leveled. It's a good idea to use blue tape to try and see where the next couple of pieces go so it's a little bit easier to visualize as well. But just make sure that you, know, you just kind of keep with it. And I cut as I went because my design started to become a little off by about an inch to an inch and a half, but you can't really tell that much. So we're using a brad nailer to install the wood slats and it did get a little tricky over the window. So I just try to carry the design over just as if the window wasn't there and just try to cut around it. So it was a bit challenging, but not impossible. You can see I'm trying to push and give Art a little bit of support while he's installing these boards. I'm afraid of heights, so it was a challenge for me. I'm so glad he was here to help me because I don't know how I would have been able to do it without him. After all the boards are installed, I puttied any of the nails, holes, cracks. I also used silicone to also fill in any of the cracks. Just try to make it look as clean as possible. Once the putty dried, I sanded it down and now it's ready for paint. We are using a brush and a small foam roller. The paint is tricorn black. I feel like a broken record, but yes, tricorn black in satin finish. 
for the boards and the wall was already painted the tricorn black and flat i wanted to make sure that i only painted the sides of the slats while i was outside because i wanted to finish installing them that way i could putty and sand and then i could do the satin finish on the front part i didn't want to paint everything at the end only because there are two different finishes that i'm working with And this is the finished wall. I am in love with how it turned out. I can't get over it. It's such a statement piece. It was hard in the beginning, but as it you know, came together, it got a lot easier. So I hope you guys enjoy. Please let me know what you think. And yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try and answer them as best as I can, but I will catch you guys in my next video. Take care.